success looks so easy from the outside, but all successful people have had to overcome enormous obstacles along the way. And in many cases, look failure right in the eye. Most successful people don't focus on the struggle and rarely do they talk about it because quite frankly, that's not what creates success. Join us here where we will chat with fierce female entrepreneurs and share the good, the bad, and the ugly of entrepreneurship and talk about the obstacles we have faced and how you can overcome them to reach the success that you desire. I am your host, Cami Lehman, and this is the She's Invincible Podcast. Thanks so much for joining us today on the She's Invincible podcast. And do we have a treat for you? We have the amazing Francisca Iselli with us today. Francisca is a maverick entrepreneur, leading marketing and brand strategist, mad adventurer, author, and the co-founder of Basic Bananas, The Business Hood, Ocean Lovers, and Moments of Humanity. In 2013, Francisca was awarded the Young Entrepreneur of the Year Award, and she was recognized for innovation, creativity, and philanthropic involvement. She's a board member at the Global Entrepreneurs Organization, EO, where she's advising on communications, marketing, and branding. She also launched an impact initiative called E-Ocean to inspire entrepreneurs to be more sustainable. Francisca sits on the judging panel for Singularity University and has run think tanks at the United Nations to address the UN sustainable development goals through entrepreneurship. She's a true visionary and eternal optimist. No challenge seems to be too big for Francisca. She is known for her rebellious nature and doing things differently. She has this rare combination of being both creative and strategic which makes her a powerful leader in the business world. She's the author of three best-selling books, Bananas About Marketing, Perception, and her newest book, The Carriage Map, which the foreword was written by Sir Richard Branson. She's regularly featured across the media, including Inc., Forbes, Business Insider, Virgin Inflight Entertainment, Marie Claire, Cosmopolitan, Smart Company, Dynamic Business Magazine, BRW, 2UE, Channel 9. She is a Swiss-born Australian, calls herself a Swazi with a sharp-witted humor and the ability to speak five languages. She's known to make up words, which keeps everyone amused. The key to Francisca's success is her down-to-earth attitude, infectious energy, integrity, and courage. She is an idea generation machine, and her brain seems to often work on double speed. Francisca is a big thiever in social business and is heavily involved in various ocean conservation and sustainability projects. In her spare time, Francisca loves going on adventures, spending time in the ocean, playing music with her band, Salty Lips, which you can find on Spotify, and learning new things and spending time with family and friends. On one of her recent adventures, she rode her motorbike from Switzerland to Kazakhstan? Yeah, Kazakhstan, yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm like, I know I didn't say that right. That's really far. Oh my gosh. Along the Silk Road, which made for interesting tales. Oh my gosh. Welcome, Francisca. So great to have you with us today on the She's Invincible podcast. Uh, Thank you so much for having me, Cami. I'm so happy to be here. Oh gosh. Well, listen, this is a loaded bio. I'm just so excited to share you with our listeners today. You have done so many things, uh, so many exciting things. You know, people do a lot of things, but these are like amazing, exciting. And so I would love uh, for you to tell everyone a little bit about you, who you are, where, where did, how did you get where you are today and what makes you invincible? Yeah. Wow, that's a, a big question. So, well, where I am right now is I, I do live, I'm Swiss born, as you mentioned in the bio, and that's also why I have an accent. And, you know, my friends always love making fun of my 
sometimes sentence structures when I don't get it completely right. I live in Sydney right now. I've been in Australia for 14, 15 years and I'm a, uh, an Australian and a Swiss now. And right now I am really focused because I can't actually travel that much anymore right now because of COVID. And so I'm really focused on working in and on our businesses, mainly basic bananas and ocean lovers and our brand consultancy. And what makes me and how I got here, I believe, and maybe, you know, since this podcast is all about being invincible, I believe what are some of the traits that I find have brought me here and make me invincible are one is optimism. I'm super duper optimistic. I always see the glass half full. Maybe, you know, I sometimes say maybe I'm a little bit delusional, but I think it's a good thing actually to be a little bit delusional. I, I, I don't think that things are not possible very often. And that's definitely helped a lot in the business journey or even on the adventures, you know, like riding along the Silk Road, just believing that I can and that we can. And the second one is intuition. And this is something I learned along the journey. I didn't know too much about intuition growing up until later into my 20s. And then suddenly I became really intrigued about this whole thing. What is this intuition? And I started to really research it almost, you know, almost researching intuition from a logical standpoint, but intuition is not that logical. So I, I started to really embrace it. And now definitely the last 10, 15 years of my journey also in business have been all about intuition and embracing intuition. The third one is courage. I feel like courage has definitely helped me to, to get to where we are and run basic bananas, especially in a way that is unique to us and, and standing by our values and our principles, which we'll talk a little bit more about later when you know, we share a few more lessons on that. So having the courage to, to do business our way, that's definitely also helped to be invincible. And the last one I would say is just always leading with the value. So always asking myself, is this adding value? You know, am I doing this to add value or am I just doing it? If I'm just doing it and it doesn't add value, then I don't want to do it. So is this adding value? Is this making an impact? And I believe those are probably the, the key things that have really helped to bring me to the place where I am now. Gosh, that is amazing. So I love what you're saying too about, you know, uh, the, on the lines of invincible with optimism, intuition, courage, and value, right? So that's something, that's a reason why I started the She's Invincible podcast was to make a bigger impact and to have a bigger reach. And so that is so near and dear to my heart. So I love that we're so lined up there. So let's do this before we go into uh, some of the things that you wanted to share today. Let's talk a little bit about your businesses because I don't want to leave that uh, to wonder. So you've got four things happening here that we mentioned in your bio. So let's start with basic bananas. So tell us real quickly about that. What do you do? What, what is the mission with basic bananas? Yeah, definitely. So basic bananas is, is my oldest business. It's 11 years old now. And it came from a place of seeing a huge gap in the market. So I used to work in advertising after university and while I was working in advertising with, with big corporations doing strategy and, and helping them with their advertising and marketing, I realized that a lot of small entrepreneurs, small businesses don't have access to the knowledge that the big guys have paid for with our agencies that I worked in. And I just saw how a lot of businesses are struggling because of a lack of knowledge of how to promote their businesses in the most effective way. So we started a business called basic bananas with my ex-husband 11 years ago to help small business owners understand marketing. So it's, it's a marketing mentoring organization. And we started in Sydney first with face-to-face -face training. So workshops, all in-person workshops, group workshops, and also a little bit of, of consulting with, with people one-on-one. -on -one. We don't do that so much anymore now because of time constraints. But we started in Sydney with, with group workshops and then we expanded into all the other major cities in Australia, Melbourne, Brisbane, Perth, etc. 
And then we went into Canada with a Canadian partner. And then we partnered with a woman in the US, Val and Sue. They're both amazing. Val is running the US right now. So we are running also sessions in the US, the same programs. And then Switzerland, we started last year with a, a partner and we added Sweden this year. So it's the whole company is all about, again, adding value and helping small business owners to understand marketing and helping them with their campaigns in a very cost-effective way. So that's, that's the purpose of Basic Bananas, big vision. I love that. Yeah, I love that. And you guys have been around 11 years, so that's amazing. And, uh, and I love that you're working with smaller entrepreneurs. So yeah. and that, that's a lot of our following on our podcast. Okay, so let's move on to the business hood. That's a great name. It is, isn't it? Yeah, the yes. business hood was born out of Basic Bananas. So what we found at Basic Bananas is that a lot of businesses that we worked with, their design, the, the websites, the, their brand strategy often was inexistent and, and the brand just wasn't something often that the business owner was proud of. And you really need to be proud of your brand. You need to stand behind and, and, and feel it. And so we started the business with a brand consultancy to help people with that implementation. So with websites and branding and, and creating that brand identity in the beginning. And so that business is now run by one of my dear friends, also a Swazi, Julia. And she is the head of the, that agency now. She runs it, she's amazing. And she comes from advertising too. So I pinched her and she is running the, the business now. We, we do a lot of strategy, brand strategy work with clients. We also right now what we actually are, our latest projects, which we are focusing on right now, which are so exciting, are putting together culture books for companies. So culture books are like company books, guide, company guides that help companies when they onboard new team members and to keep the culture aligned with their principles. So how they, they you know, the code of conduct, their principles, etc. And it's, it's a really, it's really good work to help people because as people are working from home now more and more, it's really handy for them to have something that outlines how to, how to behave in this culture. I agree a hundred percent. They, it's such a shift, right? With uh, how you lead in the office or in the corporate environment to having your entire force scattered all over the world, right? Yeah, yeah. Amazing. That's, I can see where that would be such a great value. Okay. And then our favorite, right? Ocean lovers, right? I know you live right on the ocean and, uh, Yes. And you have a passion that I do. I share that same passion. Uh, so tell us about ocean lovers. Yeah, I love the ocean. And, you know, I guess growing up in Switzerland, I didn't have ocean. And usually, you know, you're attracted to what you don't have. So I've always been so attracted to the ocean. And when I moved to Sydney 14, 15 years ago, I just became obsessed with the ocean. It's my favorite place to be is by the ocean. And it's also the answer to all my questions. Usually I just go sit in the ocean. I'm like, oh, okay, I got it. And it's also very humbling. I surf a lot and it's very humbling because sometimes you, you know, you paddle out and you're like, oh yeah, I've got this. I'm on top of the world. And then you just get completely smashed by the waves. You're like, oh, okay. I guess I don't have, you know, all the superpowers. <laughs> the ocean is grounding me. It's good. I needed uh, probably a little bit of a grounding. And so I was sitting in the ocean a few years ago and I was just thinking about how I can make a bigger impact for ocean conservation. There's a lot of plastic in the ocean. A lot of beaches everywhere in the world are quite polluted. And there's microplastics. Our sea life is, you know, diminishing and our coral reef are dying. So I was just thinking, it's, you know, I need to do something. And I knew that I needed to play by my strengths when it comes to anything. And this is a really good tip for anyone listening. And my strength is creating really attractive, sexy brands that, that move minds and hearts. And so I realized that the way for me to make an impact with ocean conservation is to build a really good brand, a brand that, that can motivate people. And so we started, I was just sitting in the ocean around Christmas, maybe four years ago, and I suddenly thought, ocean lovers. That's what it is. It's ocean lovers. It's uniting people around the common cause. And the mission at that company is to motivate and inspire the masses to save our oceans through different products. We have a surf suit now made from recycled plastics. Our future vision is rather than only manufacturing our own is to actually partner with established 
businesses that are good. So businesses that are producing good products that are ethical, that have a clean supply chain. And that's so that's so it's a marketplace to aggregate different products from different small businesses that are making an impact. That's amazing. I love that. Okay. And then Moments of Humanity. How did that come into play? Oh my God. So Moments of Humanity is not, it's not really a business. It's a, it's a movement. And we're, you know, really keen with that, with that movement to spread more kindness. And, and how it came about is actually, I was in Colombia two or so years ago, traveling after a conference that I was speaking at in Toronto. I just looked at the map. I'm like, oh, Colombia, it's kind of like only five hours away. I might just, you know, go down there for a minute. <laughs> and I went to Colombia and, and I just was sitting on a uh, plane, uh, an internal plane from Bogota to Cartagena, I believe. And I was thinking, what is it that makes traveling so impactful and so meaningful and so deep? And Suddenly I had this concept, it's moments of humanity. It's moments between strangers that are very brief moments where you feel so supported, where you meet strangers and, and you're kind and they're kind or someone does something very kind and it just makes all the difference. And I lived that concept, moments of humanity, all along the Silk Road. So riding my motorbike from Switzerland to Kazakhstan through some of the craziest countries that most people haven't heard of that I haven't really known too much about before this trip has really shown me the power of moments of humanity, moments between strangers. And so with that movement, like I went to, the, to my team, my design team, I said, hey, how about this? We need to do something. They loved it. So we just launched a website where people can share kindness messages and also on, on social media to spread more kindness. So we just share stories of, of really beautiful moments between humans to inspire people. That is amazing. So one of the questions I had for you was about your motorbike. So let's just get that out. So what kind of, I'm like, is this like a moped? Is this like a Harley? Like what kind of motorbike are you driving around uh, Australia in? Yeah, so in Australia, I have, I have two bikes here. One is a BMW 9T, it's a 1200cc. It's quite a, a powerful bike. And I, so I only ride it when I know, hey, I'm going to be alert. I'm not going to be naughty on it because I, I try to be good. And the other one I have here is a Triumph Bonneville. It's a 900cc, so a slightly smaller engine. But the one that I took across the, from Europe into Asia was a BMW GS650. It's sort of an adventure in Euro bike that is also useful to go off-road. So that's the bike that I had in, across the Silk Road. But I, I kind of damaged it. I had an accident, so I had to leave it behind in Kazakhstan. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You really are living out loud, aren't you? <laughs> so we are going to talk about some things about strategy, about brand strategy. So tell us a little bit about uh, your, your thoughts and tips for our listeners on that. Yeah, I thought it might be useful for listeners. And th this is super applicable to both if you are an entrepreneur or a business owner or you work for someone else this this sort of method that we use i thought might be useful for anyone listening actually and it's um, a framework we use at our branding agency the business hood and at basic bananas it's a framework we've created called the brand alchemy method and it's sort of a a uh, framework that helps you to put together your own brand map and you can use it for a business and you can also use it for your own personal brand because we all have a brand whether we you know guide it or not but we should be in charge of it we should have a bit of clarity on what do we stand for and how do we want to be perceived so i'll walk you through the different elements of the brand alchemy method and then we could also maybe include even the framework in the show notes. I can send it to you and maybe we can make it a, a link to download. It. Yeah. yeah. So, that'd be great. so what it, how, where we start always in this framework, it's almost like creating your own brand map that guides you. So the first part is always about your purpose. And again, for your business or for yourself, the question is, what is your purpose in this business or for yourself? What do you want to achieve? What do you want to be known for? So number one is the purpose. Number two is the principles. What are your principles that guide you? And these are principles. You can also call them values. So what, what kind of values do you live by? Or what kind of values does your business 
be is your business guided by so this could be you know for for the business for one of our businesses for let's say basic bananas one of our values is playfulness so we want to make sure that we sprinkle playfulness generously as we as we teach and mentor we want it to be playful because there's a lot of you know <laughs> serious stuff out there and you learn often better if you feel positive and amazing and so that's your principles for you personally you may have also your own principles like for me one of my principles obviously is courage and one another principle is trust so trusting in myself others the universe also love is a big one so basing everything on love so those are principles the second part the third part is your brand identity and here the question to ask yourself is how do you want to be perceived in your business how do you want to be perceived how do you want your business to be perceived if it's for yourself how do you as a person want to be perceived then the fourth one is your differentiation so how in your business can you differentiate? What, how can you stand out? How can you set yourself apart? So you really want to find ways to be different. And again, for your own person, the, a good question to ask, I mentioned this before, is ask yourself, what are your strengths already? What are you really good at? And then play by them, play by your strengths. And it's really powerful to do that. I do this every year, sometimes every quarter when I do the plans for the businesses is I ask myself, what is my role here? What should I focus on? The last few months I have changed a little bit because of COVID. I had to change my, my focus a little bit and, and again, play by my strengths throughout this time. And your brand promises. So what are your key promises that you make? What do you promise your customers? And just come up with three, four, five of those. And ideally, when you craft your brand promises, you write one for different personalities. So you think about what are the types of people that I usually attract or that I want to attract. So generally, you have a big picture person. You want a dreamer. You, for them, you want to have a brand promise that is a little bit more big picture. You know, the problems that you solve, the impact that you make with your business. Then you might have someone who is a little bit more detailed. For them, you have a promise that is outlining a little bit more the details of your product or service. And then you might also have someone who is a bit more skeptical, you know, does this work, has this work for other people. For them, you want a brand promise that is helping them overcome their skepticism. And this could be by giving uh, some testimonials, case studies, how many people you've worked with, etc. That was the fifth element. The sixth element is your stories. So you want to really tell your story if you have one, uh, if you have an interesting story. If you don't have you know, a story that you think you want to tell, that's also okay. Maybe you have some customer stories. But stories are important because we are storytelling beings. We, we, since the dawn of humanity, we've always learned and, and made history through telling stories. And so stories are something that people connect with very deeply. So you want to tell stories, obviously, that are true. <laughs> and then the last part, number seven, is you need to then activate this brand through what we call a brand engagement. And you can do brand engagement internally with your team if you have a team. And that's where the culture book comes in. So the culture book I mentioned earlier that we are working on for a few companies right now is just a, a guide for your company that is outlining your brand and, and showing people how to behave within your brand. And then you also need to have brand engagement externally across your touch points with customers. So you, a, a quick idea here, and I know I'm giving you a ton of content here. We, we definitely can get in touch to get the framework and all that. I know it's a, like a high speed content download for you, but I know you are all about value here. So there we go. So what a quick exercise I'll give you is, write down all the touch points you have in your business. So this might be your emails, your website, your social media, your maybe quotes, your proposals, your brochures, presentations, make a list of all of them. And then think about how you can amplify and magnify your identity, your brand identity. So for example, at Basic Bananas, as I mentioned, we are all about one of our, part of our identity is playfulness. 
So we need to make sure that across our touch points in, for example, our email signature, we have a little bit of playfulness in there. So in our email signature right now, it says what we're currently obsessed with. So each team member says what they're obsessed with. You know, I'm obsessed with, with fairy floss or I'm obsessed with baking or I'm obsessed with new music, just something a bit playful. And if you look at our social media channels, you can find us with at basic bananas on Instagram, Twitter, everywhere, Facebook, you can see again, the content has a little bit of playfulness in it because it's part of our brand identity. So do that for your own business. And you will just, again, this will be one way to become talk aboutable and to differentiate. It's a very, very cool exercise to do. And it's sort of a process you keep evolving and working on. I love what you just said about being talk aboutable. Oh my gosh. I, I'm constantly saying, you know, make your success so loud that they hate you can't hear the haters, right? Like be talk aboutable. Oh, I love that. Oh, this is so great. So yeah, we'll definitely get this outline and put this in the show notes so that the listeners can actually follow along with these notes and maybe mm -hmm. fill in a blank or something where they can, you know, make this to how it applies to their brand and their business. I love that. So a couple things. One thing I wanted to ask, I just have a list of things that I was like, I got to remember to ask her this. So uh, Sir Richard Branson, he wrote the forward to your book. So I know that we have many listeners that are writing books. Did, did you know him prior to, uh, you know, reaching out about him writing the forward to your book? Not personally. So I, I know quite a few people who know him personally. Now I do know him. So what, how that happened? And that was actually going to be my, the good story. But oh, I'll, well I'll then just... hold on, hold on. Then don't tell it now. Right? <laughs> that, it was going to be the good story because it's quite the good story. Yes. Let's hold that then. Let's hold the, But I was like, I got to ask her that. One was about the motorbike. One was about that. So, and then the other thing is, I know you have a summit coming up. I saw that on your website and you have something coming up in August. So could you tell our listeners about that? Yeah, it's amazing actually. So we used to run a lot of face-to-face -face training in different cities and we would run a half day session across the world in different cities with different mentors where we get small businesses and entrepreneurs in the room and we show them how to put together a one page marketing plan. It's an amazing session where you get our framework of how to plan your marketing. And just, this is really helpful for people to have more clarity and focus on stuff that really works because there's so much information out there. So it just make, puts everything into a system. And so because we can't run these sessions face to face anymore, we're running them virtually from our studio here and people from all around the world join us for this summit. And we run usually one a month. It's a two hour session and it's free at the moment. We used to, when we do face to face, we used to charge a fee. We just decided with COVID people need more help and they really need to come to this session and money shouldn't be an excuse not to be able to come. So we make it free at the moment. And it's a two hour session run usually by myself, my co-founder or one of the country partners together. It's a really cool session. And you can find the details to book on basicbananas.com forward slash virtual summit. I think that's the link. I hope I didn't get that wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's the latest link that, that the team have used. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so could you tell our listeners where they can find you? Yeah, so you can find me on any of the businesses we've mentioned. So on basicbananas.com, there are a ton of resources for business owners that are free. We have a podcast also with a weekly episode that is really good. You can find that on the Basic Bananas Radio on all the podcasting app. We also have a YouTube channel, Basic Bananas. You can find a lot of really good videos on there that are helpful. And then for me personally, if you want to get in touch with me, you can find me under Francisca easily. And also the website is that same name, Francisca, F-R-A-N-Z or C for zebra, I-S-K-A-I-S-E-L-I.com. And on that website, you can also get in touch and find me also on social media under the same name, Francisca easily. And I'll, I respond personally to all the messages. So I, I don't, I have a, obviously my, my team and, and my assistant, but I, I just make a point of responding to messages myself. I just feel like people deserve, you know, if they make the effort to message, I feel like they deserve 
my my response from me. Personally. I love that. I love that. And you know what? That's one of the things that differentiates you, right? That's like one of your things that makes you different and stand out. Uh, that no matter you know how busy you are, that you I, do that. Yeah. yeah. And I, and people like me appreciate that. Okay. So we're going to shift. Uh, we're going to shift right now on the She's Invincible podcast. I promise the listeners that they are going to learn from fierce female entrepreneurs. And I, I know you can agree. They just did. They just got a lot of great, great value tips from you. But I also promise that we're going to let them in on the journey because women especially tend to compare themselves to other successful women but when they see you they see these mountaintop experiences they never see your journey so they look at you and they think she's so smart she's so lucky she's so pretty she's so you know has so much support whatever whatever they think then they all think something but you know what they need to know is that you also struggled, but you always got back up. And that, you know, that's why you are successful today, because you are invincible, because every time you get knocked down, you get back up. And I I love even the example you gave about the motorbike, when you said you had to leave it behind, you had a little accident. It's just like, okay, whatever, right? You just got back up and you kept on going. And that's what it's all about. I think that's what life is about. Uh, that's why our brand is about boxing gloves, because I really feel that we live life in rounds, right? So in every round of boxing, you know, there's a winner or a loser or, or it's a tie. Uh, some rounds you get knocked out, but every round you go back to your corner and when the bell rings, you get back up. And that's what I think about with you and your journey and your story. So we're going to share a little bit of that now. So I would love for you to share with our listeners a good story so, and just uh, something that was just such a good story for you and your journey. Yeah, there are so many, but the one that I did want to share that came to mind is that, you know, the, the question you asked me for about how, how did I get Branson to write the forward for my last book? This was my third book. And I'm writing the next one now. I couldn't resist a, a deal from a publisher. After I wrote this last book, I said, I'm going to take a break from writing. And then I got a deal from a publisher. I'm like, oh, you know what? I'm just going to do it. <laughs> so I'm working on the next one right now. And so for the last one, the, last, the first two were business books, mainly about brand strategy and marketing. The last one was a bit more personal and it was on courage, called The Courage Map. And it's a, it has a lot of lessons from that Silk Road journey on the motorbike and relating back to courage. And when I started writing the, the manuscript, I wrote on the, I asked myself, who would be the best person to write the foreword for this book? And to be honest, there was just one person in the entire world that I thought there's one person that I would love to write the foreword for this book for, and it was Richard Branson. So I wrote on the first page, I wrote foreword by Sir Richard Branson. Now, the reason why is because why I wanted him to write it is because 11 years ago when I first started my first business, I came from advertising. I had no idea how to run a business. I knew marketing and branding, but that's it. And so I read his book, Richard Branson's book called Losing My Virginity. And that was the book that really inspired me to do business my way. To, yeah, take some advice, but really listen to myself more than anyone else. And that's what I did, even with the name. Basic Bananas. My very first mentor, she said, don't call your business Basic Bananas. And I said, yes, I will. <laughs> and I'm glad I did. And so he really inspired me on this whole journey. And I feel like he, he, his irreverence and his courage are incredible. So I decided that he would write the forward. I finished the manuscript, gave it to my editor, and she saw that on the first page. She's like, oh, are you getting Branson to write your forward? I'm like, yeah. She's like, uh, okay, well, if he... If you don't get it, I can maybe help you get a different forward. <laughs> she didn't really think that I would get it. And I didn't know yet how I would get it. And so a few weeks passed. And then one of my dear friends invited me to go to Necker Island, which is Rich Branson's Island, for a tech challenge, to join this tech challenge and, and support young entrepreneurs and, and projects. And I'm like, that's interesting. And Necker Island is it's pretty far from Sydney. That, this was last year, actually. And I looked at my schedule and it was in April and I had a really 
busy already March and February traveling a lot. I'm like, oh, you know, it's four flights. It's going to take me 36 hours one way to get there. And then I remembered, but wait a second, I wanted Branson to write this forward. If, if I have any chance of getting this, the only chance will be me going to his island and talking to him. So I did. I booked the ticket. I'm like, you know what? I'm coming. And uh, intuition again. So I, I flew to Necker Island for this week of this tech challenge and spending time with entrepreneurs and working on businesses and brainstorming. And Br Branson was there. And so we had a few conversations along the way. I never asked him for the first, you know, five days because I didn't want to, you know, be one of these fan girls. We just had conversations about different things. Then on the last day, he was sitting there reading a paper. I'm like, this is my last chance to ask him if he's interested. So I went over, sat next to him. We spoke a little bit about ocean, his ocean project. And then I just asked him, I was super nervous. And I asked him, hey, look, you know, he knew a bit about my motorbike journey and, and my businesses and, I said, would you be interested in writing the foreword for my next book? And he said, look, Francisca, I really like what you do. I'm really interested and I think you're doing amazing work. I only write one foreword per year. So he said, just send it to me and I'll take a look. And I thought, yeah, that's pretty much a yeah, but nah. <laughs> You know, and then I sent it to him. And a few months later, also thanks to one of my dear friends who knows him pretty well, who put in a good word for me. A few months later, I got a message from Sir Richard Branson personally. And he said, hey, Francisca, it's my pleasure. I will write you a foreword. And then again, a few months passed, maybe two months passed. And I suddenly have an email from Branson while I was sitting in the Virgin Lounge in Sydney. This is incredible. The universe works in very incredible ways. I was sitting in a Virgin Airline Lounge in Sydney to go on a flight. I get an email from Branson saying, hey, here's your foreword. You know, it was, uh, it was great to write it. Good luck. I, I was sitting there typing. I'm like, what do I say? Dear Richard or no, hello, sir. Oh, uh, I kept, I took me like five minutes to just write. And then all I said is, uh, dear Richard, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It means a lot. And he responded straight away saying, you deserve it. <laughs> all while I was sitting in his lounge. <laughs> Oh my gosh. That is amazing. Mm -hmm. That is amazing. And so now you know him personally. Yeah, I know him personally, but I mean, I don't think he would pick up the phone if I called him or anything, <laughs> but I do know him. That's amazing. okay. He wrote in your book. That's yeah. awesome. What a story. That is great. What a great story. So now we have to take a turn and we have to talk about the bad. So, you know, we, the thing about success is it's always greeted with many, many obstacles that we have to overcome, right? Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. And the bad, you know, I, I often struggle with, with bad because I, have, I seem to have a brain that forgets the bad and, and I often see the silver lining in most things. I do have probably the worst moment in my journey and my life was... And it probably was also the moment that actually fueled my entrepreneurship. But the worst moment in my life was 11 years ago, just before I started my business, when my dad passed away. So my dad passed away from a heart attack. He was very young. He was 58 at the time. And he was very quick. He was in Switzerland. I was in Sydney. And that moment was the worst moment in my entire life. It really brought me to my knees. I was working in, in advertising and I was, you know, I couldn't believe it and, and had a few months, probably even years where I just didn't really want to, you know, believe this reality. And it also fueled me because it was the moment where I also suddenly looked at my own life and I asked myself, if I was to die right now, would I be happy with what I'm doing? Am I giving life my everything? And I was working in advertising and I realized that, no, I can do more. I can make a bigger impact. I can really shape my journey. And so I just quit my advertising career and then started Basic Bananas after my dad's uh, passing. And, you know, I, I had so many moments in, in my last 11 years where I sometimes feel like, yeah, he's, he's somehow looking down every now and then and he's going, yeah, you know, get back up, keep going. And yeah, that was, the, that was the worst moment. And it was also the moment that really made me live even harder. I've always lived really hard and, and out loud and just doing my thing. But that, I think that even fueled me even harder. 
Yeah, that's so difficult too. Yeah, I lost my dad too. He was older than that, but still it's always, doesn't matter when, they could be a hundred and it's still the most devastating thing. I'm sorry that you went through that. But, you know, I love that you, you know, your outlook and perspective on that, that that was like a pivotal moment for you as well. And it really set you on the, the track that you you are on today, right? Thankfully for that. So yeah. what a what a blessing. Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, even the whole, the whole motorbike thing and the Silk Road, it's a bit of because of him, because he was a motorbike rider. He loved it. And he always wanted me to ride with him. And I never got into it because we had a bit of a rebel thing going, him and I, you know, father, daughter, we're, we're both very similar. We're both a bit stubborn. So we, we often clashed a bit. And so I never really got into motorbike riding, but he, he was into it and he had a bike back home in Switzerland. And then when he passed, I suddenly thought, oh, kind of want to do this in his honor now he would you know be looking down very proud that his daughter is riding and but then it was so funny because then I had this silly idea to ride along the silk road and my mom was cool with me riding motorbikes but when I when I shipped the bike to her house she's like what are you doing there's a bike at my house in Switzerland and I'm in Sydney I said oh I'm coming home and I'm riding you know I'm doing a little ride and she's like oh where are you going I said oh just to Kazakhstan and she was like oh my god she wasn't very happy, obviously. And I, I kind of said, well, you know, dad would be pretty happy. You know, he's looking down and she's like, no, he wouldn't be. He would say, you're crazy to do this journey. It's dangerous. So, you know, it was really funny, actually, in one of these moments. And this was the motorbike that didn't make it, right? Yeah. He doesn't yeah. Know accident. And I, oh. I didn't hurt myself too much. I didn't break anything, which was good. <laughs> Yeah, that's really good. Oh my gosh. So do you, you I, I'm assuming too, you have an ugly story. Everyone has like the ugly story of the, the journey. And, you know, I love what you said too. I want to say this so I don't forget, um, is that you, you tend to have like that selective memory where you don't remember the bad things that I think we're wired that way. I think that's part of what makes us fierce is that, you know, we know that successful entrepreneurs, they don't become successful because they focus on the bad things, right? They, yeah. they get back up, they forget the experience, they remember the lesson and they get on with, with whatever their journey is. So I love that you pointed that out because we never, and that's why people compare successful people to themselves because they don't see it. And that's a good thing. But of course, it's valuable for them to see the inside. So let's give them an ugly before we go. Yeah, it's a, and it's such a good point to say that, you know, the, the selective memory and focusing on the good, because I also feel like often it's very funny, actually. And I think it's just how my, my brain is wired or how I choose chose to wire my brain. You know, I might, may have in the past have had disagreements with someone or maybe someone wasn't nice or maybe there was a hater or, or I don't know, you know, something not so um, amazing. I don't remember, you know, th there might be things that I've had with people and then somebody might remind me, Hey, remember that time when this person did this? I'm like, no, I don't remember <laughs> because either I have a fish memory or I just, I just it's okay. Like I don't, I don't mind. It's not, that's not going to bring me anywhere to remember these stories. Right. It's forgiveness also. I think it's radical forgiveness. So the ugly, I struggle with this one a little bit too, but I feel like, you know, the latest sort of ugly was just a few things in a row also here in, in Australia that just, it, it, they really, they really hurt, <laughs> hurt in my heart a little bit, but just for the people. And I feel sometimes a little bit like, almost like overwhelmed by, by the pain of the planet and the people. So in, in January, December, January, we had in Australia, the bushfires that were very, just very damaging and, and nature got burned up. Animals were, there were pictures of animals and, and just being burned, farms being lost, people losing their, their everything. And, and I remember I was driving once and I live on the beach. So obviously our suburb here is, is not in danger, but I, I felt like I need to do something again, but it's so overwhelming. We have so many world challenges to solve and I'm just one person. So I was driving in the car somewhere and I saw the smoke in the distance. You saw smoke everywhere in Sydney. And I just had tears running down my face thinking like, what am I, you know, what can I do? And then that happened. And then the next thing, the next ugly thing obviously was the pandemic. And, and because at Basic Finance, we work with so many businesses so closely 
we saw so many people struggle, so many people. And we just, the whole team really at Bessemer stepped up to do our best to give these people hope. And the ugly was, you know, seeing people struggle and losing their businesses and, and having to, to give up sometimes their businesses or, or going bankrupt in some cases and some rebuilding, most actually rebuilding other businesses or their own businesses. And, you know, from that ugly, I have also seen so much, actually, I have to say in that community at Base Brands, I have seen so much optimism despite all the challenges and people having to change everything. Sometimes in some cases I have seen so much optimism and the community I feel has come even closer together. So the ugly again led into beauty, which often is so close to each other, right? Ugly and beauty is sometimes so close. So yes, yes sort of the ugly, you know, I, I, I often see the ugly can lead to good things too. Absolutely. I think most times it, it, it never feels that way when we're in the moment, but I think in most times when we look back, we realize that it was those moments that are pivotal to where we're going next and that, yeah, and it's devastating as we go through it. But I always, everyone I talk to that shares their ugly story is always saying the same thing. Like that's what leads into the most beautiful things that are happening in their life or their business today. And that's the whole point of this is just to share with people that they are going to go through the ugly and they're going to go through the bad. They're also going to enjoy the good and the great. But at the end of the day, they just have to get back up and keep going and this is normal part of the process and you know no one sails to success they all fail to success right we we figure out things that don't work and you know we learn lessons along the way and it's just that's just what it's about and I'm just so grateful to have you here today to share your story of all of what you're doing right now and the impact that you're making in the world and the businesses that you have that you're working together to make such a difference and it's just so powerful and impactful and i appreciate so much that you're here sharing that with us today it's my pleasure thank you for everything you're doing with this show and inspiring so many people with what you're doing so it's my absolute pleasure to to be supportive Thank you so much. Well, you guys, you heard it from Francisca Azeli. And um, I don't know where you are in your life or where you are in your business, but if you're face down on the ground right now, get back up, girl. Get back up. You can do it. Hey, thanks so much for hanging out with us today. If you were inspired or learned something new, please subscribe to the podcast, give us a review, and share us with your friends. For more information about me and how I can support you, please stop on over to my website at camilehman.com and book a free call with me. I'd love to meet you and learn more about how I can support you.